the next question is, well, if you have, if you find out that your bank is not uh, up to speed, is not up to the grade, where do you go? Well, fortunately, the good news is that for every weak bank in the United States, there's also a strong bank. So not all banks are in danger. And in fact, these 11 uh, are um, the strongest banks among the larger banks. They're not huge, gigantic banks like a Citibank or J.P. Morgan Chase or Wachovia, Washington Mutual uh, or Bank of America, but they're pretty substantial banks with at least $10 billion in assets. And they're kind of scattered around the country. Um, you have Deutsche Bank uh, Americas, which is in New York with an A minus. That's a very good rating. GMAC Bank out in Utah has a B plus. New York Community Bank in uh, New York City has a B plus, uh, and so on. There are strong banks in this country, but they're not gigantic. They're not huge. Um, Wells Fargo it did not make it on this list. That doesn't mean it's a weak bank. The criteria for this list was B plus or better. As I said earlier, look for big banks with a B plus or better and at least $10 billion in assets. We do not, no, we, there are no ratings on credit unions. No. That, that at, at this time, to my knowledge, no one in the country is giving you a strength, financial strength rating on, on credit unions. Um, so so the, next, the next issue is, what about how, say, yes? Yes, it has, you can pull up a list by rating so you can search in your area, your state, um, and then pull up a list of the strongest banks in your state. And you can specify a rating range. So you want B or better, for example. And then you can go through and hunt and peck for the ones that are nearest you, have branches near you. Any other questions about banks? Yes. Huh? The, the data is updated quarterly, and it has a data lag of maybe six months. As long as conditions are not changing uh, very rapidly, it's very, very accurate. If we get into a situation where you know, uh, the economy is deteriorating at a rapid pace, which it looks like it may, uh, then the data becomes less and less reliable. And then you would want to err on the side of safety, which is at least a B plus, maybe an A minus. Any other questions about banks and bank ratings? Yes. Yes, the, the control of the currency uh, <laughs> supervises a certain segment of banks, and they are actually the ones that have done a good job in trying to get a handle on this derivatives risk. Their data on the derivatives risk, they're only, on the derivatives, they're looking at only the top 25 or 30 uh, derivatives players in the, in the uh, banking industry. And their data is available on the web. And they update it um, uh, quarterly. Uh, if you go to Google and type in just two words, OCC and derivatives, It'll come up straight, it'll be at the top, of the, the search item at the very top of the screen. If I, if I can connect the internet, I may even be able to show you that. Go ahead, next, next question. What about brokerage firms issue CDs and money markets similar to banks? The, unfortunately, the, the data available on brokerage firms is not as complete and not as readily available to the public as the data on banks. So what we've done for brokerage firms is we've compiled a list based on a single variable, this one here, called the capital multiple. The capital multiple is, uh, is a very simple formula. It says um, how much capital is the brokerage firm required to have as a minimum capital requirement of the SEC? And how much capital do they actually have? So what this is saying is that in the case of Edward Jones, for example, 
Edward Jones has almost 20 times more in capital than it is required to have by the regulators. Uh, Bank of New York Mellon Pershing, which runs the Pershing uh, brokerage firm, has almost 16 times more capital than it's required to have. So that gives you two layers of protection. The first layer of protection is the required capital, which the SEC mandates. And then the second layer of protection is the, any additional capital that the brokerage firm may have. Yes. Yes, exactly. So, so this is just one measure. Okay, this, this gentleman is saying, but in addition to this issue of capital, there's also the issue of how much risk they're taking and how many, what games they're playing. Uh, and that's, that's a sticky issue. Um, the fact is that some of these firms are big players in, in a high-risk uh, marketplace like derivatives, and some of them are strictly are pure brokerage operations that do not take risks of their own with their own principal. Uh, and so th those are actually, you hit, it, pin, you hit it right on the nail on the head. These are the two factors we look at. The first one we look at is the one that's on the screen. And the second factor we lo look at is do they take positions for their own account? Uh, these, some of the, the online brokerage firms, like, uh, for example, Schwab, Fidelity, are, are virtually, have virtually no positions of their own. They're strictly doing the brokerage. Whereas Merrill Lynch, which on this, uh, on this uh, list is actually looks like it's higher than Fidelity, is very heavily involved in, in those high-risk casinos uh, called the derivatives market. And sure enough, um, Merrill Lynch has run into difficulties and has, has, was forced to sell out. Whereas Fidelity and some of the, the um, other firms are, are in much better shape. I, I, when we presented this list uh, three or four months ago, I said I much prefer Fidelity over Merrill Lynch. I'm concerned about Merrill Lynch. I'm not concerned about Fidelity. And sure enough, Merrill Lynch has had difficulties. Yes. Questions about brokers? Yes. Hmm? Scott Trade. Scott Trade is, is, is not, is, is purely a brokerage firm. I am not aware if they have any of their own positions, it's probably minimal and they also have very substantial additional capital beyond their minimum requirements, four to almost 14 times. So I'm not concerned about Scott Trade. I would be concerned about Morgan Stanley and Goldman Sachs. Uh, again, this is a list we put out three months ago, and since then, uh, there have been questions raised, been raised about Morgan Stanley for sure, sure. Had there not been a, a heavy investment from Japan, I'm not sure if Morgan Stanley would be alive today. And even with that investment, I'm concerned that Morgan Stanley may not exist the next time you and I speak as an independent entity. For two reasons. Number one, it's at the bottom of the list in terms of its uh, capital. And number two, as this gentleman said, Morgan Stanley is heavily involved in the high stakes game of derivatives. They're low on the list, but they, they have the advantage that, that it's strictly a brokerage operation. Yeah. 